My friends, do you ever have an issue of not knowing whether to reach for a reverb or a delay on an audio source? And once you've decided, you go even further down the rabbit hole trying to decide which type you want to pick? We're going to do a few episodes breaking down the different types of reverb and different types of delays. But before we get into the intricacies, I need you to understand one thing. Reverb and delay are the same thing and I'm tired of pretending it's not. For you to understand when you should reach for one over the other, you need to understand why they are the same and then how they can be different. By the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of these daily used time-based effects. So what's happening fam? Miami here with JST and today I wanna have a discussion. Reverb and delay are two sides of the same coin and exist because of the same phenomenon. As I said a second ago, I mentioned that we're dealing with time-based effects, but it goes a bit deeper than that because the only thing that separates these effects is just that, time, to get my Neil deGrasse Tyson on. Delay is going from point A to point B. I see a delay right now in you hitting that subscribe button. Transition game still crazy. No, but seriously, let's get back to it. Delay in music is a sound wave going from point A to B. There's a delay happening from sound leaving my mouth into the microphone that's recording it right now. However, when we think of delay in the audio world, we're usually referring to echo. If I yell down a well, is anyone there? Is anyone there? Is anyone there? The first thing we're hearing is an echo, but because of the delay it took to hit the reflection point and come back, we simply call it that. But what about the sounds we heard after the first reflection point, while the sound wave continued to bounce around in the well, hitting second, third, fourth, and more reflections? That is a reverb. Are you seeing where I'm going with this? Reverb is simply multiple delays. So this makes things pretty tricky, right? Because the phenomenon of the echo, we've separated delay and reverb into two different categories. Reverb has been equated to sound waves we hear bouncing off of multiple nearby surfaces, and delay is a single sound wave bouncing off a distant surface. On a technical level, that's the same thing, sound bouncing off of reflections. But now that we know they're based on the same concept, let's talk about the three most important contrasts. One, organic versus inorganic time-based effects. In mixing, reverb is often used to simulate an organic enclosure. It's based off sound waves hitting nearby surfaces, right? So by using a reverb plugin, you can make it seem like your audio source was recorded elsewhere. It adds an entirely new dimension to your mix. Most of the time, the point is to make this sound as natural as possible. It's almost meant to feel as though it's not even an effect. It's supposed to take the listener and put them in the space you want them to imagine. For example, if you recorded an opera singer in a cathedral live, you probably aren't going to add reverb to the performance, right? Because that's the sound you're trying to capture anyways. And the second someone hears it, it's going to bring them to that cathedral too. Cathedrals were specifically designed to reverberate in perfect ways for performances and listening. Even the cathedral bells were specifically designed so that when they were hit, it would notify everyone in the area to tune in. If you didn't catch that, hit the bell, transition game, level up. But in summary, reverb is better used for natural and obscure effects. But when you're using an echo-based delay effect, you aren't really looking for a natural result. This is the effect you want, the effect you want. It's adding movement to the song and is meant to be obvious. And because it's only a repetition of the original sound wave, it isn't eating up too much space. Which brings us to our next point. Two, where they cause problems in a mix delay problems, specifically echo-based ones because that's what we mix with most of the time. This type of delay can cause problems because people tend to time them the wrong way all the time. For one, people try to use delay to create space in a mix, but the biggest one is improperly syncing your delays. When you're not properly syncing your delays, you can ruin the movement of a song. A long time ago, I talked to Joey about this and he basically said the way he figures this out is the head bob test. Figure out how your head is bobbing to the music and sync your delay to that. Let's do a couple of those on the spot from some songs I did on the channel before. Uh, buckle up for the long drive the long home. home, crash course to crash an all-time all low. low, please, please do, not do not forget me. me. Remember that one? How to write a song like Blink-182? Right. Cause every time I turn on sound, I see you in the underground. I'm hoping now one day you see. You're the only one who's there for me. 
Do you see what I mean? Finding the right sync speed changes everything. Now, as far as reverbs go, they tend to cause the most problems in busy mixes with fast songs. That's because the frequency spectrum of a busy song is already filled with many elements competing for space in a mix. Remember what a reverb is? It's a sound wave that's being bounced off of multiple surfaces, too fast to be considered an echo, and every one of those frequencies is stacking on top of each other over and over to eventually fill up the spectrum. I just came to the realization that reverb and white noise have a lot of similar properties, which explains why impulse responses can be made with white noise, which is a convolution reverb because that's a whole different episode. Since reverb can fill up the entire spectrum, when you use too much reverb, it's going to fight with elements that are in your mix constantly, especially the low end. Reverb is one of the biggest causes of muddy low end, which is why people tend to send them to auxes or sends and low cut everything under a specific frequency. So like I said, use less reverb on busy songs because in reality, why would there even be that much reverb on a specific instrument if you're supposed to be putting them in the same space? Another big thing about reverbs is they can cause phase issues. Yeah, people never talk about that, do they? Think about any audio source that is manipulated and based on time, but we'll get into that more later. Our last point of this episode, number three, where are they most helpful in a mix? Reverb, as I mentioned before, are most helpful in slow songs, but why? It's because you actually get to hear the reverb tales in a performance that you wouldn't typically hear in a faster song because too much is going on, because the reverb is all encompassing. There's a level of consistency heard on the performance that you wouldn't get with an echo delay. The best way to explain this is delay doesn't feel personal. That's because reverbs are simulating enclosures we're used to most of the time. They feel natural unless it's an intended effect like a plate or a spring reverb. Most of the time when we get files to mix, the artists and instruments were not recorded in the same room. And using a reverb gives us the chance of putting them all together to sound like a cohesive performance. Delays are most helpful for making elements of a performance shine, especially in dense mixes. Since it's not continuous and tends to get quieter over time, you can use it to make elements noticeably pop right away while fading into the distance once the source audio stops. Also, since it's just a repetition of the source audio, you don't have to worry too much about it fighting with the entire spectrum. There are times I don't even automate delay and leave it on subtly the entire song without a second thought because it isn't causing issues. As mixers, we're problem solvers. If there's no problem at all, less work for us to do. So we just went over organic versus inorganic sounding effects what problems they can cause, and where they're most helpful in a mix. I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. I'm curious, do you agree with me? Are reverb and delay the same thing? Leave it down in the comments below. We're going to be digging into the different types of reverb and delay soon, so make sure to stick around because you're not going to want to miss this. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, you only have to do it one time, and tap that cathedral bell for notifications so when a video drops, you know the location. Until next time, I am out of here. Mic drop, except as engineers we know, I'd never really drop this thing, because the-